Hey everybody, it's Alex here. And yesterday was a really big day for Apple. They had their Worldwide Developers Conference where they talk about upcoming software and they announced the release of iOS 14. And this is probably the biggest update to iOS ever since the original release. This is the year we finally get the changes that we've been looking for, um, at, at least me specifically. Um, so there's a whole long list of changes and I'm sure you can tell just by looking at what's on camera here that we've got some things to talk about, some things to go over. So let's dive into iOS 14. So the first thing you're gonna notice here that's different is I have these widgets kind of at the top of my screen and Apple has actually included widgets now, or I guess they've, they've had widgets for a while, but they have finally made them more useful and more Android-esque, more Android-like. Um, that's something that we're gonna see throughout this entire update is so many of these features are actually, have actually been available on Android for years now but in typical Apple fashion, they don't do it first. They're gonna do it last and do it the best. So um, this is actually executed very well, and I'm excited to see um, how this progresses and matures over time on these devices. So like I say, iOS 14 beta was just announced yesterday, and I downloaded it on my device here. I would not recommend doing this. Um, it's gonna be very buggy. It's gonna be very glitchy for a lot of people. It's meant for developers, but I figured I'd download it so I can give you guys a working look and a working glance at how it all works. So let's dive into the widgets here. So we've always had widgets on the left-hand side of our home screen on iOS, and they were just kind of these slivers or these snippets, and they didn't do really a whole lot. And now, finally, they have adapted to become more live and updating so like you can see here i got my batteries i got reminders i've got um activity here and apple did a great job unveiling this during their live video you can go back on youtube and watch it i'll link it in the description so basically i'll walk you through how this widget process works and go through some of the other changes on the home screen that we may see so now if we want to edit a widget or add a widget we go into what they call jiggle mode so we're going to edit home screen and everything's moving now, everything's moving around, and we can hit this little plus up at the top left. And I apologize if you hear construction noises, they're doing construction right outside today, so what can you do? And then we can add widgets. So we got maps, we have photos, fitness, a reminders widget, weather, calendar, and we get all these different options for some of our apps. And over time, this will develop so that pretty much every app should have some kind of a widget for it. So we can add, Let's add fitness here, and then we can go through and customize the size that we want our widget to be. If we want a small one, a large one, maybe we don't like that, we'll go, let's go into calendar. We can scroll over and see a whole month's view of the calendar. So let's just add a giant calendar widget right to our home screen there. And then there it is. So if we swipe up, there's our home screen. If we swipe over, it moved all of our apps over for us. If we wanna change it, we can long press edit widget and like I said, it's a little buggy. Um, so those are just like options for us to mirror our calendar. Um, and we'll remove that because I don't want that on my home screen. And then it brings all the old apps over so it doesn't actually keep them on that screen, which is very nice. And then these are actually live updating widgets. So with that, they update throughout the day. They're kind of stacked. So if I scroll here through here, I can see fitness, I can see weather, and it'll change throughout the day depending on the time or my location to give me the most relevant info. So I got my calendar, I can scroll through and go to my reminders. I've already kind of set this up and tailored it in a way that's gonna work well for me. Um, it doesn't come this way by default. You'll have to kind of tinker with it and make it your own. Same thing on the left side here. You can add widgets and kind of do your own thing with it. Um, but just very cool overall, great functionality. I have my fitness widget here, even though it's here. So like if I'm looking at the weather, I can scroll over and just at a glance, see how I'm doing on my fitness throughout the day. Um, but widgets are huge, hugely helpful. They have so much potential and I'm super excited to see, um, what Apple is going to do in the future and how developers are going to utilize this to make their apps more widget friendly. So like just the weather, I don't even have to open the app. I can see what the weather is going to be and I could even expand that and make it larger. So let's add a new weather widget. That's the small one. We'll go, we'll go with the, that one. You can see the whole day in advance. Or this one you can see the whole week let's do the whole day just throw it up there and now i can see my entire day what the weather's going to be at a glance without even having to open the app and that's super super nice and handy but like i say i'm going to remove that because i don't want it 
On my home screen, I got it kind of where I like it. That being said, you may have noticed something when I went into jiggle mode, and this is the app library. So similar to Android, you know how you swipe up or like on a Samsung Galaxy device, you have like an icon, you tap the button and all your apps pop up. You only have what you want on your home screen and then everything else is sorted into a library. Apple has finally, finally done this and it's something that's steered me away from Apple for so many years and something I just finally accepted is the fact that we would have endless pages of apps that we just never use or folders full of uncategorized things that we just, it was just a mess and they were just everywhere and you couldn't put those apps anywhere. And they've finally given us an option to work with this and do something about it. So if you scroll past the end, so I have two pages here, two pages of apps. If I go one more, I get into my app library. And this is where all of my apps live and are categorized and sorted automatically with the AI intelligence of the phone. So like creativity here, I didn't actually create this folder. The phone recognizes what apps these are and then automatically sorts them for me. Um, reference and reading, all kinds in there. Um, and then Siri suggestions up at the top, so my most used apps or recently added. It just it just categorizes your entire app library and it's amazing. And as you can see, we have a search bar there and we kind of get an app list of all of our apps. Similar to Spotlight Search, you can just search for whatever you want. So if it's something you don't use often, just throw it in your app library, search for it when you need it. And then what I like about this is it's kind of like a, they look like folders or like widgets, but they're live widgets and folders. So all these big icons I can actually tap on. So if I want to go into my reminders here, it opens up and I don't have to like open the folder to go into my reminders. I just open it and it's right there, which I think is super nice and super helpful. And again, that's just right over to the right side of your last page on your home screen. In addition to that, you can hide pages now. So like on Android, you could go into like a page editor mode where you can see like what each home page is and what apps are on it. You can do that now on iOS. So we can enter in the edit mode by just holding, kind of like on Android. And if we tap our three little dots down here, it'll zoom all the way out. And then we get a glance at every page of apps that we have. I only have two because I like to keep things organized. But let's say you just installed this on your device and you have like 10 pages of apps. And you're like, man, I really don't want to go through and remove or like categorize all my apps. I just know I use the ones on the first two pages and the rest are like, whatever, they're just extra. You can hide your pages without having to do much work. So we go into this editing mode and I can tap this little check mark to hide that page. And then if I click done, now I only have one page before I get into the app drawer. So it hides all those extra pages of apps that you just really don't use or ever look at without having to recategorize and remove all of your apps. And then likewise, if you want it back, you just go back out, check it again, done, done, and it's there again. And then your, your app library is at the very end. So that's huge. Just the widgets and the app library alone completely changes the way we view, interact with, and just use our phones every day. And I think it's awesome. In addition to all this, there's a bunch of little things I picked up on. I've been using this for like maybe a full day now, just constantly and taking notes as I'm uh, observing little things here and there that they've added and changed. So we'll go through some of those things right now. One of the big things I know a lot of people like are the inclusion of new wallpapers. So we'll go check those out. If I go into my settings here, we'll go down to wallpaper, create a new wallpaper. So there's a few new stills options that you can use. Um, you know, by now, all these wallpapers are going to be out on Reddit and Twitter and everything like that. So um, let me know if you want to link to them. Otherwise, they're going to be out there already. So wallpapers are a biggie. Um, in addition to that, you may have also noticed this home screen option. So we get the option to, when we download new apps, do we want them added to the home screen or added to the app library only? Um, we can show or hide the app library. So that's kind of nice. So new little options here and there that Apple has added into the settings to better accommodate for all these changes. Something else that they've added as like an extra security feature is a notifier when your camera or your microphone are being used. So if you're on a phone call or recording something, there's a little icon that pops up. And at first I didn't know what it was. I thought it was a glitch, but it's actually so subtle. It's kind of nice. So I'm gonna show you how this works by doing a screen recording here, just of my phone. So I'm recording and I got my recording icon. And now you can't really see because the wallpaper is orange, but I'll zoom in for you. There's a tiny little 
orange dot that's flashing up at the top corner there and that's letting you know that your microphone's on and if I go down here then you can see that system is using the microphone and it's an orange dot so because I'm recording my screen it's also recording my audio similarly when you have your camera on that little dot flashes green so you'll see a tiny green dot flashing and then when you go scroll down you'll see that your camera is being used um, and I just think that's a nice little security feature Apple is really concerned about security and privacy and uh, just to have that option to see when your microphone or camera are being used or when an app is using them is just really nice and I think that's a cool little feature another big thing is picture in picture so this again is something that's been on Android for a long time and I just kind of accepted the fact that iOS was just never gonna get it but here we are um, and this gives you the ability to exit out of a video and go and use another app while the video is still playing. So if you have a YouTube video up for music or something, you can actually exit out of YouTube and still keep playing or watching the video. So I'll show you how this works. Since this is so new, most apps and developers don't have support for this yet, so it's not really gonna work on YouTube. So I actually have to go out to Safari in YouTube. So I'll pull up a video here. This guy seems like a good content creator. You should uh, give him a sub or something. But um, what I do is I open up the video in full screen mode and like I say this will probably change and update to become easier as the apps kind of roll out and the software gets developed but if I want to play this video and then go back to my home screen to listen to it or watch it or something I can play it and then there's this little little button at the top and now picture in picture so I can keep on doing whatever I was doing and continue watching my YouTube video on my home screen turn that down a little bit so I can go back into my reminders and keep working if I want to just listen to it I can push it off to the side and it's still playing and then I get this little arrow to pull it back if I want and that's just really really nice and handy to finally be able to have that on iPhone if I want to close it out just hit the X and it goes away so super, super awesome, and I'm excited that Picture in Picture is finally here on iPhone. Another thing that I've noticed, just a little thing that I picked up on, is um, the contacts option. There's like uh, buttons within the contacts and just certain elements around the user interface that have changed, that have become rounded. So I'll, I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about here. If I go into my messages, and this is just a thread I started with myself, I'll go into info, and you can see that now these buttons are kind of more rounded off and they're not as square or icon-ish as they were before so it just looks a little different a little updated a little cleaner and that's just that's just nice i i like that and i found these little things around here and there in the uh, settings and in the contacts app and phone and so on and speaking of messages iMessage has been updated in some big new ways um, starting with the ability to pin messages so if i go back out here this has been a feature that I've wanted on iOS for so long and it was just so nice when I was using Android to pin my favorite messages at the top and they're always going to be there and I don't have to scroll for them in my conversation list. So I can do that by swi swiping over and pin and now it's there all the time and it's just that's really nice. I'm excited about that. In addition, they also changed some things with groups. So you'll see up here I have a group and that's like an adaptive option. So basically without going into too much detail, it's more like Facebook Messenger. Um, a lot of features Facebook Messenger has that finally implemented here, including the ability to respond to threads directly and um, just comment in line with replies and call out people to tag people. Um, if you don't know what any of that means, it, it basically just adds more functionality and behaves more like Facebook Messenger. Um, not a big deal, but just little things that you'll notice if you're in an iMessage group conversation. So that's the iMessage update. And then we also have a big update to Siri as well. Um, so in the past, when you would hold down the Siri button, it would light up the whole screen and it would just take up everything that you were doing. Now it's a lot more effective and friendly on the screen. So if I say the magic word or hold the button, Siri now pops up there at the bottom and I can interact and it pops up as a tiny little element. Tell me a joke. Have you heard joke about yoga never mind it's a bit of a stretch <laughs> so you can see that the elements what you asked for pop up here and it's not just over the entire screen so that's very nice to have that be um, just 
cleaned up and better um, organized on the phone. And you could even see when I swiped down here before it said Siri used the microphone recently. So that's nice as well to be able to see if uh, tying back to the mic and camera usage, what apps have recently used your microphone and camera. And then in addition to that is also a new phone call element. So if you get a phone call coming in, in the past traditionally your whole phone would kind of just take the screen and then you get the red button or the green button or you can slide to answer and like that's all you got just one big screen for a phone call coming in now it's a little bit different so I'll, I'll, I'll test this and demo this for you I have another iPhone sitting here and I'll call myself and show you how this works all right so you see what's happening here I'm calling myself and we'll we'll mute that but basically you get this element at the top that pops down and it doesn't take over your entire screen like this does. So if I answer it here, then you just get a really small option there for your phone call. And um, that's just so much nicer. It doesn't take over your whole screen so you can continue to multitask. You know, if you keep on going and just using your phone, then you just get the option up at the top like before, and then it'll pull you into the larger interface. But you know, if you're in the middle of doing something, it doesn't pull you out into a phone call setting and just take over what you're doing. So that's that's very nice. So that's it. That's the majority of everything that's new with iOS 14. And like I say, this is a beta version, so I would not recommend downloading this on your device. It's gonna be very glitchy. They're gonna update it like every week and there's gonna be features that don't work and it's gonna be just a headache. But I downloaded it to show you guys and demo some features. But this will be releasing and launching to pretty much every iPhone out there um, back to the 6S sometime in the fall. So in October or September, you can expect to be able to download this for your device and then start using some of these features. But um, that was just a portion of what they announced at WWDC yesterday. They also announced um, new Mac updates and Apple Watch and iPad and everything. Um, but this video has gone on long enough just about the iPhone. I will do some more videos coming soon about those other software releases, but I figured this one was gonna be the most relevant to most people out there. And I'm just excited to be able to share all these new features and updates. So um, definitely super excited about this. Stay tuned for more news and updates as they come out. And I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.